we're gonna start uh, now. So the first speaker is Xu Dong, I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly, from uh, Peking University in China, uh, from CMS. It's gonna be a talk about the search for new resonances coupling to third generation quarks for heavy resonances decaying to bosons. Uh, okay, so thank you very much. I'm gonna give you some timing uh, verbally during your talk, but um, otherwise, um, this is for you. Okay, uh, can I start now? Yeah, yeah please. Uh, okay. Uh, thanks for your introduction. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Uh, in stock, uh, six recent CMS routes using Furon2 data will be included, uh, uh, like the VLQ particles and the top BS move and the extra uh, like part particles and the diboson and the last one is the trabosol search. Um, in the searches for heroinus, the bosons have large boost, long boost, uh, therefore uh, they can be reconstructed as large returns jets. Uh, in CMS, we use AKA jet typically for each AKA jet or grown jet mass is calculated after applying the soft job mass algorithm. Uh, for the boson tagging, some useful techniques are developed, like the traditional um, uh, subgenres and the hot VR, which is a new jet clustering technique, and uh, the uh, machine learning based tagger, uh, which is the DPAK tagger. It's a multi cluster tagger for top WZ and his tagging. The right plot uh, shows the comparison between the different techniques. Uh, you'll see deep AK8 has the uh, uh, best performance. Um, let's go to the third analysis. Uh, it's a single production of vector like T quark taking to a um, uh, Z boson and a uh, top, top quark. This analysis considers final states where the, uh, where the top quark decays quadratically and, uh, the, and uh, the Z boson decays to neutrinos. Uh, it's the first loss in this channel in round two. The mass range for the TMS uh, is from uh, six, uh, 600 to 1,800 GV. Uh, we, uh, we can use the uh, information of the neutrinos to uh, reconstruct the Z for the top. Uh, three different topologies are plotted. Um, the top quarks 10 gates can be reconstructed from three narrow uh, jets or one W jet and or one B jet and or identify as a single top jet. Uh, in the signal regions, we uh, further uh, demand that uh, met greater than 200 GV and no lepton, one B jet and the minimum dirt fire between the met and jets greater than 0.6. Uh, in each category, a similar turn is fit to the uh, transparentness of the top and mass system uh, is performed. And these two plots show the MT distribution in the loved and the merged uh, categories. The main backgrounds are the T bar, uh, W projects, and Z projects. Uh, they are taken from the Moncolo with corrections estimate from dedicated country regions. The left plot shows uh, the upper limit on the signal growth check section as a function of the VLQ TMS after combining all the categories. Uh, you'll see that um, uh, the, top, the TMS below 0 0.998 is recruited for the width uh, as uh, 0 0.05. The right plot gives limits and the included region in the width mass plane. The interval of the included mass is tended up to 1.4 TV. The next uh, loss is the search for B star decaying to top and W, where the top decay hydronically and W decay leptonically. In PP corrections, 
uh, our B star would be singly uh, produced while the strong Can people hear me? Yeah, but I can't hear the speaker anymore. Oh, shit. Same as me. Thing is, it's probably not going to be able to see the chat. Uh, you can try to annotate on the slides. I mean, right? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Thanks. That's good. That's a good point. Uh, can I? Yeah, I guess I can. I don't think I can annotate on his slides, but here he realized. Yeah, he saw the messages now. So yeah, yeah, so, yeah. The problem is that um, we're not allowed to go beyond timing, so he will have to cut short part of this talk. Can you try to speak, Shodung? Can you try to speak, please? Oh. Is it just me now, guys, or? No, no it's not. Okay. okay. Ah, bloody hell. Yeah, network. Oh, well. Uh, okay. Uh, I see you're talking because I see the microphone moving, but we can't hear anything. Unfortunately. Also, I cannot see the screen now. Oh, now it appeared. Oh, it's okay. Do you have access to the recording? No, I, I don't think there is a recording on uh, up uploaded. Yeah, no, there is no recording uploaded. I don't remember if the recording was requested only to plenary speakers or to everybody. It was everybody, but I think not everyone sent like. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, maybe Shudong, you can uh, like stop sharing and try to fix the microphone if you can issue. Uh, and then I can share the slides for you if the if we can hear you again. Okay, good. 
Uh, can you try to see whether you can fix the mic without sharing? Maybe if it's a connection issue. I think it's requesting like in the chat that maybe we can switch to the next person. Well, we won't have time to then switch okay. back. Uh, but, so okay. yes, we can move to the next person for sure. Yes. Uh, okay, so yeah, this moves the timetable a bit. We move to the next speaker then. So we have Jan Lin uh, from Michigan University. Yeah, can you hear me you well? Start hearing. Yes, I can hear. Yeah, let me share the slide. Thank you. I guess you can say it in the yes. screen now. Okay. Yeah. yeah so, so <clears throat> sorry, one sec. Uh, so the your talk is um, slightly shorter. It's twelve plus four. So uh, yeah, just bear in mind that we give you a give you a, a verbal clue when it's uh, when it's about the end. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I. I'm Yanlin, so I'm going to talk about the performance of a uh, boosted boson and the top taggers, uh, including the application in physics analysis in ATAS. <coughs> so, yeah, uh, here's the outline of my uh, talk today. I will give an introduction to the large R jet and the jet substructure variables uh, uh, first, so as this uh, variable are widely uh, used in the boosted taggers. Then, in the second part, I will talk about the uh, boosted taggers, uh, including uh, WLC boson tagger, uh, Higgs boson tagger, including decaying to BB or Tau Tau. And also I will talk about uh, top tagger. Uh, and I will also uh, uh, introduce their applications in the uh, searches for uh, diboson uh, TT bar resonance and uh, also dark matter based on the full round two data set. So I need to mention that uh, the, the, uh, the Higgs boson tagger is also uh, uh, applied in searches for uh, white or light quark. Uh, so uh, since they've, and this part will be covered by the Angela's talk later. Okay, first uh, on this uh, large R jet uh, reconstruction. Uh, so as we know for boosted uh, boson on top, uh, the hydronic decay products are heavily uh, collimated. So therefore the large R jet is uh, adopted. It's based on anti-KT algorithm. Uh, with uh, radius uh, parameter r equals uh, 1.0. It's also uh, groomed with the trimming algorithm by mitigating the contamination from light uh, patterns. Uh, there are three major uh, reconstruction for large R jet in ATAS. Uh, the first is the IFC uh, topo, uh, which is uh, reconstructed, reconstructed from the topological uh, cluster in the carometer. It has a, uh, an, uh, it has a good accuracy of uh, energy reconstruction. Then we also have the uh, track Kylo cluster. Um, it is uh, reconstructed by combining the inf information uh, from the match, the tracks, and also the top cluster. It has better performance at high PT. Then we also have the unified uh, flow objects. It's a combination of particle flow objects and the TCC. Uh, it has a uh, good performance across the entire PT range. Then regarding the uh, uh, substructure variables, uh, so first uh, this is uh, the, we have the N uh, subjectness tau, uh, which quantifies the probability of a jet having N subject. So yeah, you can also find the equation here. So the variable widely used in the uh, in the boosted tiger is this uh, tau three two variable. It's the ratio between the tau three and the tau two. Uh, which is very useful for the three prong, uh, like three prong uh, tiger, like the top quark decay. Then we also have the energy correlation ratio, so the D two, uh, which is also which is wi uh, widely used for two prong tagging, like the W Z or Higgs boson decay. Uh, then we also have the jet mass uh, variable. It's a sum of M kilo and M T T, uh, which is weighted by the inverse resolution. So the Kylo and the T uh, represent the mass of, from the top cluster of a trim jet and the, the ghosted associated charge particle tracks respectively. So 
On the bottom, I just want to show you uh, the, the corresponding uh, data among color distributions for these uh, three variables, uh, which are extracted from, from this uh, performance uh, uh, paper. As we can see, uh, we have very good modeling for, for them and uh, yeah. Okay, then I want to uh, first uh, talk about the WRZ uh, boson tiger. So first we have this uh, color-based tiger uh, by using the large RJ uh, substructure variables. Mm, and also uh, we have uh, two working points. Uh, uh, one is the flat 50% uh, uh, efficiency and another is the 80%. So the problem bottom left just show you the background rejection efficiency for this tiger as a function of the jet PT. Uh, apart from this, we also have the DNN-based tiger, uh, which are uh, trained with the substructure variables. Uh, also, there's a recently uh, development on this UFO-based tiger, uh, which uh, shows uh, two to four times better background rejection uh, with respect to the uh, tiger based on SA topo. Also, there is a development uh, on this mass decorrelated tiger with regression of adversary neural network uh, method. Uh, so the two plots on the bottom right just show you a comparison without this uh, technique and with the technique. But as you can see, uh, before we have this technique, there's a clear scalping st structure uh, for the QCD jet as shown in this purple line in the W boson uh, mass region. Oh, sorry. And after uh, including this uh, uh, regression or adversary neural network technique, there is no such feature. Okay, now on slide six, I want to talk about the application uh, in this uh, W, uh, application in this uh, W gamma or Z gamma uh, resonance search. So the target is a, either a, uh, either is a new heavy boson uh, that couples to a stand model W, Z and the photon for the high mass region the boosted WRC topology is, is expected. So therefore this uh, WRC candidate is uh, reconstructed by this large R jet uh, built, built from the TCCs. And also uh, the mass window cut has been applied consistently to, uh, to, correspond, to correspond to the uh, WRC uh, uh, on shell mass. And then this uh, D2 variable is used to uh, identify the two prong substructure. So yeah, the, this environment of the large object and the photon distribution is shown on the, uh, on the top right plot. Uh, this is also used as a final discriminant. And uh, since there is no uh, where's access found, the upper limit has been set uh, on the procession as a function of the pole mass as shown in this plot on the bottom left, bottom right. Okay, let's move on to this uh, S2BB tiger. So here, so first we have a baseline uh, one, which is the double B tagging technique. The hasty decaying 2 bb is reconstructed by large R jet uh, with two B tagged variable radius uh, track jets. So the plot on bottom left just uh, show you uh, uh, this uh, double B tagging efficiency as a function of the haste jet PT uh, by comparing with the benchmark uh, uh, with a fixed uh, radius track. So clearly we can see the, by using the various uh, radius track jet, uh, there's a pretty large improvement uh, regarding the efficiency uh, for the very high PT region. There's also a neural network based tiger, which is trained with uh, SBB as signal versus a QCD or top background. So the output is based on these uh, three class uh, probabilities as defined in this uh, equation. Now, uh, 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 bottom right plot, it shows the comparison of this N based tiger compared with the, the, other, uh, uh, the other technique. So clearly we can see the improvement on the multi jet rejection uh, uh, in terms of the multi jet rejection uh, as shown in this uh, uh, silent line. Okay, now I want to talk about the application of this tiger in the diameter search first. So yeah, here this search is performed in the context of two HDM model with a with a, a wider boson Z prime as shown in this Feynman diagram, or an additional pseudo scalar as shown in this uh, uh, two uh, Feynman diagram. One is the Coulomb Coulomb fusion product production, and another is uh, associated production with two B quarks. So the HBB decay mode is used uh, 
uh, here, and therefore the uh, baseline WB tagging has been adopted for the Hayes candidate selection uh, in the boosted channel. So in the end, uh, the limit have been set uh, for the two scenarios uh, in terms of this uh, automated search uh, as shown in this uh, uh, two plots on the bottom. Okay, I also want to talk about this uh, application in the uh, that has uh, to four B uh, search. So here the target is uh, either a spin zero or two uh, resonance, as shown in this Feynman diagram. So for the boosted channel, the leading to uh, large object is uh, treated uh, treated as the Hayes candidate, and also the US have been categorized with a number of B tagged uh, subjects. So as shown in this cartoons. So the 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 environments of the the two large object is a uh, used as the final uh, discriminant as shown in this plot on, on the bottom left. So, and uh, yeah, in the end, uh, we can set a R limit as a function uh, on the cross-section as a function of the single whole mass. So as shown in this uh, plot, we can see the uh, boosted uh, channel has a, uh, has a pretty good sensitivity in the high mass region as shown in this uh, blue dash line. Uh, the largest axis is uh, seen at 1.1 TeV, the local significance is 2.6 sigma, and the global value is 1.0 sigma. Okay, yeah, now I want to, to go. Oh, okay. So now I want to talk about the Nai Tau Tiger. So here, the boosted uh, haste to Tau Tau is reconstructed as large object uh, with PT greater than 300 GV. Uh, the plot on the bottom left show you the uh, Nai Tau reconstruction efficiency as a function of the data, as we can see for the very small uh, data region, this boosted data has a pretty large improvement in terms of the uh, uh, reconstruction efficiency. Then the second stage is for data identification. Uh, a BT method is used, it's trained to separate from the multi-jet events and also uh, using the info of clusters in the parameter tracks and the vertex. So as shown in this uh, plot on the uh, bottom right, this 6% uh, working point is used as a benchmark, benchmark. Then on slide 11 is the application in the uh, boosted that has to BB total analysis. So for this analysis, more than half of uh, that top pair have that are less than uh, 0 0.4 for very high mass region. Therefore, the that top tiger is needed. And also the has decaying to BB is reconstructed with a large object. Uh, yeah, the environment of the that uh, is, uh, is a distribution is shown in this plot and it's also used as the final discriminant. There's also a, a requirement on this uh, MHH depending on the resonance uh, hypothesis, resonance mass hypothesis. Uh, this is also the reason why we, we saw discontinuity in this limit plot. Okay, now I want to talk about the uh, top tiger. So first we have the color based Tiger using jet mass and the TOS32 variable. Then we also have the DNN based Tiger, which is trained with high level jet variables. So the plot on the bottom left show you the uh, improvement in terms of now the, the time is ejection. Now. Yeah. You can carry on, but uh, we will have less time for questions. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, on this bottom left plot, we can see the improvement in terms of the background rejection. By, compare, by comparing with the cut based and the DNA based tiger. And also, there's a, a new development uh, uh, based on UFO jet. Uh, it's retrained and aut optimized uh, tiger uh, dedicated for UFO jet. We can also see the, uh, uh, I mean, the background rejection uh, comparison between the LC, between the tiger based on LC topo and the UFO jet. So clearly, we can see a big imp improvement. Uh, from the UFO jet as shown is a uh, black line. Okay, then on slide 13, I want to talk about the uh, this application in the <coughs> in the TD by resonance search. So the target here is the uh, TC2 model where Z prime decay into a uh, TT bar uh, by using the fully hydronic decay. So yeah, we will apply the DNN uh, contain the top tiger to two leading LC topo jet uh, with the uh, variable radius are uh, track jets. And uh, also the functional form is, has been used to fail to the 
uh, data spectra as shown in this uh, plot on the bottom, on the top right. So in the end, uh, we, there's no uh, significant access observed and we have set the exclusion limit on the C prime cross section as a function of the pole mass as shown in the, plot, as, as shown in the bottom right plot. So this, uh, for this TC2 model, the Z prime has been excluded up to a 3.9 TV or 4.7 TV, depending on the uh, decay width. Okay, then uh, on slide 14, uh, to summarize, so I have presented the development of boosted WLC uh, haze and also the top tigers, as well as their applications in the new physics uh, searches based on the round two data set in ATAS. And we can see there's a uh, pretty large improvement in terms of the searching phase space and the sensitivity. Uh, the new tigers based on the UFO have been developed and uh, they will be ready for the phases program in run three, so stay tuned. Uh, that's all I have, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. We don't have very much time, unfortunately, uh, for questions. Maybe one question, if, uh, if people uh, uh, have a question, please uh, raise your hands or Unmute yourself. Yes, uh, data, please. Hi, uh, thanks for a very nice talk. I just wanted to ask, so these are all the selections that you're talking about in uh, offline uh, selections. Uh, do you also have uh, these uh, tools and techniques uh, in uh, online that is at your trigger level? Uh, I, I think there is some uh, trigger level uh, analysis uh, yeah, I mean, in Atlas, but, uh, I, but I'm not really sure if uh, there's a, a boosted uh, Tiger technique in there. So yeah, I can check later, but I, I don't really have a concrete answer for now. Yeah. I probably some, someone connected uh, uh, can comment in case they know. Okay, no problem, right. but I can also follow up later. Uh, thanks. Okay, <clears throat> thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, you can stop yeah. sharing now. Thank you. Thank you. We can move to the next speaker. So the next speaker is Anjira. I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly. Uh, uh, can you hear me? Uh, very uh, faintly. Yeah, yeah, now very well. Better? Yes, so, yes. please uh, share your slides if you yeah. wish. So Anjira is from the Indian Institute of Science, Education and Research from CMS uh, is going to talk about searches for new physics in events with jets, leptons, and photons in the final state. Uh, okay, so you you have the, a normal time slot, I see, of 20 minutes, so please go ahead. Okay, thank you. So, hi everyone, I'm Angira Rastogi, and uh, today I'm going to be talking about searches for new physics with jets, leptons, and photons in the final state on behalf of the CMS collaboration. So let's get started with the basics first. So we have standard model of particle physics, which is a very successful theory towards understanding the laws of nature. But as we know, it's not a complete theory. There are many phenomena which are not accounted for in standard model. And in that regard, we have many new theories proposed as extensions to standard model, which can uh, potentially answer one or more of these open questions of the universe. So these new physics can be produced in proton-proton collisions and manifest themselves in different signatures, uh, such as with leptons, jets, and photons. And these objects may sound very simple, but they offer a variety of handles to uh, do very pure signal search. So today from CMS Exotica, we are going to take a look at many such results. Some of these are published in just last couple of months, so they are very recent. And then we are also going to look at some preliminary results. But for full list of CMS publications, you can refer to the link in the bottom. Okay, so let's start with the BSM theories with jets in the final state. So we have search for resonant production of strongly coupled dark matter in which uh, a leptophobic Z prime is produced and it decays to two dark uh, quarks, chi and chi bar. These dark quarks then shower and hadronize and form stable and unstable dark hadrons. So the unstable dark hadrons, they decay to standard model quarks promptly, whereas the uh, stable dark hadrons, they are the candidates for dark matter. So in the final state, we are looking for signatures with two jets, uh, which are semi-visible because they contain partially visible standard model matter and partially invisible dark matter. And we will also have missing energy aligned along with the direction of one of the jets 
because of the invisible dark matter component of the jet. So this analysis is a complementary approach to other standard uh, dark matter searches in the past because generally they look for missing energy which recoils against jet. So in this analysis, uh, the analysis is performed with 138 in inverse femto ones of data, so full run to data set, and the major standard model backgrounds are QCD multi-jet, TT bar production, and W and uh, Z production, which, uh, which has uh, missing energy from neutrino. Okay, so going into analysis details, we have two different selection of the jets. First is the signal jets, which are AKA jets with PT200 GV, and they are corrected with the puppy algorithm for the pilots. And we have standard model or narrow jets, which are AK4 jets of PT30 GV, and they have area-based pilot subtraction. So these narrow jets are used for the trigger selection and also to remove instrumental background. So there is a long list of pre-selection requirements, which is tabulated here, but I'm only going to focus on two of them, which are directly relevant to the result. So first is this RT variable, which is the ratio of missing transverse momentum divided by the transverse mass of the digit system. And this uh, MT is given in this equation. So uh, this analysis requires RT to be more than 0.15, which removes a lot of QCD background. So almost 99% of the QCD digit background is removed. Then we, uh, they also require MT to be more than 1.5 TeV, which allows a high trigger efficiency. Okay. So in order to enhance selection to the semi-visible jets, which are the signal jets, we have trained a dedicated BDT with total 15 input variables. And these variables range from jet substructure variables to variables which are used in quark and gluon discrimination and some other variables like the jet energy fractions and the delta phi between jet and met. So for the signal jets, they uh, use benchmark signal scenarios. And for backgrounds, QCD and TTVAR uh, jets are used in equal proportion. So here is a BDT output after the training. So this BDT output is a score for every, it's a per jet score. So we define a working point at 0.55 for the jet to be tagged as semi-visible. And this has a signal efficiency of 87% and background rejection of around 90%. So we define two different signal regions, low RT and high RT, where RT is the ratio of met by transverse mass of the digit system. And then in each of these signal regions, we require the two jets to be tagged as semi-visible. So it has to pass the BDT working point of 0.55. And then the signal regions are called as high SVJ2 or low SVJ2. So coming to final results, on the top left, these are the distributions of the transverse mass of the digit system in high SVJ2 region and low SVJ2 region. And then these two are statistically combined to derive upper limits on the production cross section times the branching ratio to the dark matter as a function of the Z prime mass for different different coupling scenarios. But we have also produced 2D limits as a function of mass of Z prime versus mass of the dark matter and also mass of Z prime versus this R invisible parameter, which is the ratio of number of stable by number of stable plus unstable uh, objects. So if we assume equal couplings to the standard model quarks of Z prime and uh, uh, standard model Z boson, then these strongly coupled hidden sector models are, evaluate, uh, are excluded for a mediator masses up to 5 TeV for the first time. So then next we have search for new particles in events with energetic jets and large missing transverse momentum. And in this analysis, a variety of BSM models are interpreted, such as this dark matter via Higgs portal production, where you have a Higgs along with the vector boson, which can be either W or Z, and they decay to two quarks. And this Higgs decays to invisible particles. Then we have simplified dark matter production by a new bosonic mediators, which can be either spin zero or spin one, and they directly decay to the dark matter particles. But we can also have a scenario where these mediators decay to a standard model quark and a single dark matter particle, and those are known as fermion uh, portals, which are also being looked at. Then we have also looked at ADD model of large extra dimensions and single as well as pair production of first generation of leptoquarks. So in all of these signals, uh, we have final state with one energetic jet and a lot of missing energy. So this analysis is performed with 101 inverse femto ones of data, which corresponds to 2017 and 2018 data set. And then this is statistically combined with the older result from 2016 to give the full run to interpretation. Okay, so going into the details, to select the events, we require the PF base met to be more than 250 GV, which allows a high trigger efficiency. And then we reject events where there's an isolated electron or a muon or a photon or hadronically decaying tau. 
Then we also remove events where there is a B tag check and events which do not pass met filters to remove the instrumental background. So now once all these events are selected, we divide them into three different signal regions. First is the monojet signal region, which is selected with the AK4 jet of PT100 GV, along with some additional quality criteria. So here is a distribution of MET in the monojet signal region in 2018. Then next, we have two signal regions for the mono V category, where we select one AK8 jet of PT250 GV, and the jet is required to be V tagged from the deep AK8 algorithm. And we also require a soft drop mass requirement, which is consistent with the mass of W or Z boson. Then we convert this uh, neural network output of deep AK8 into a binary score, which is defined as the ratio of vector boson score by the vector boson plus QCD score. And we use this binary score to define a high purity selection in which jets are more likely to be a, a V tag jet. And uh, all the events which fail this high purity jet, uh, uh, selection go in the low purity signal selection, where you can see there is a lot more backgrounds. Okay, so finally, all these signal regions, the monojet and the two mono V signal regions are combined statistically and limits are derived on all the models I was describing earlier. And in most of the cases, these are the most stringent limits to date. So I invite you to take a look at these fabulous results, but I will move on to searches with leptons. So here we have search uh, for BSM models uh, in the inclusive non-resonant multi-lepton final state. So we have total seven different final states, uh, which has both light leptons and hydronically decaying taus, which you can see in this table below. So in this analysis, we have probed three different models, vector like tau lepton in the doublet and singlet scenario, type 3 CISO mechanism, and pair produced third generation leptoquarks. So I presented a poster on vector-like leptons and quarks on Monday. So here is the link to the poster. You can actually go take a look at it. And if you like, you can vote for it. So I'm not going to cover the VLL model here, but instead focus on the type 3 CISO and lepto quarks. So this analysis is also performed with full run-to data, which corresponds to 138 inverse m ones and the major standard model background, which is the prompt production of uh, diboson like WZ and ZZ, and other backgrounds like Z gamma and TTC, they are all estimated from Monte Carlos, which are corrected in dedicated control regions. And uh, for the misidentified leptons from JIT, we use a data-driven matrix method. Okay, so to enhance the selection to these signal, signals that we are probing, we have trained dedicated BDT, which are splitted according to different flavors, uh, mixing scenario of the model, and also for the various different mass ranges of the uh, uh, signal masses. And then finally, we do three trainings for the three years of the uh, analyzed data set. And in this way, we get total of 24 trainings for the type 3 seesaw. And similarly, we get 24 trainings for the leptoquarks model. And we have nine trainings for VLL, which I'm not showing here. But in the end, from every training, we get one BDT output spectra, which is then transformed according to a adaptive winning in which we stretch the high end of the BDT score to more number of wins and compress the low end of the BDT score to less number of wins. In this way, we get more wins which have higher S over B uh, ratio and that improves the expected limit. So here are the results. Uh, first, for the type 3 seesaw, this, uh, this is a distribution of the BDT scores in the three years. So first for 2016, then 2017 and 2018. This corresponds to the highest mass seesaw training and in the trilepton channels. So in 3L, 2L1 tau and 1L2 tau channels. Similarly, we have such distributions for the quad lepton channels and for the lower mass uh, of seesaw training. And we combine all these wins statistically to derive upper limits on the production cross-section of the type 3 seesaw model as a function of the mass of the seesaw fermion. And we exclude around 980 GV in the flavor democratic scenario, which means equal coupling to E mu and tau. But we have also produced a 2D exclusion uh, limit in a plane of a branching ratio to E versus branching ratio to tau, where this corner of the triangle represents 100% mixing to electrons. This corner of triangle represents 100% mixing to tau, and the 0, 0 corner is 100% mixing to muons. So I would like to highlight that we have best constraints from LHC at all such branching ratio combinations. Next, we have the third generation leptoquarks. So similarly, we have a different BDT spectrum 
for the leptocoax training in quadlepton and trilepton channel and for all the masses. And we combine all such bins to derive limits on the leptocoax model in three different coupling scenario. So in the top tau coupling scenario, we get exclusion around 1.1 TeV. For the top electron scenario, we get limit around 1.3 TeV. And for the top muon scenario, we get limit around 1.4 TeV. So uh, for the leptocoax to top E decay, these are the first results from CMS. And in general, these are the first direct result from a multi-lepton search to leptocoax. They are not the best constraints, but still very competitive with the dilepton searches. Okay, so then looking at uh, uh, searches with leptons and jets both. So we have searched for a right-handed W boson and a heavy neutrino. Uh, and in this model, the WR is produced and it decays to a heavy neutrino N and a lepton, which is standard model lepton. And this N then further decays to an off-shell WR and a lepton. And we are looking at the hedonic decays of this WR. So in the result scenario, we are going to have final states with two leptons uh, of the same flavor, so EE or mu mu, and then two jets. So for the result scenario, we have uh, jets which are AK4 CHS and PT40 GV. And we can also have a boosted scenario in which we get this one lepton and all the decays, uh, decay products of the heavy neutrino is constructed into one big jet. And that is an AK8 puppy jet with PT200 GV along with some uh, soft drop uh, mass requirement and other things. Okay, so the leptons that we select are also required to be high in PT and isolated. And this analysis is also performed with full run to data. And the major standard model backgrounds are Drillian production, dileptonic TT bar, and single top. And these are all estimated from simulation and uh, corrected in dedicated control regions. Two minutes okay, to go. So, yeah. Okay. So coming to final results. Uh, so in the result scenario, we construct the invariant mass of two leptons and two jets and use it as the final discriminating variable. And in the boosted scenario, we construct invariant mass of the lepton and single jet and use it as the final discriminating variable. And we combine resolved and boosted topologies uh, statistically to derive upper limits on the production cross-section of the right-handed W boson. And we exclude it around 5 TeV in various scenarios. We have also produced this 2D limit on the production cross-section in a plane of mass of the W boson, uh, right-handed W boson and mass of heavy neutrino. Okay, so finally coming to searches with photons. So we have first search for exclusive diphoton production at high mass with two forward moving protons. So this is a, a example of light by light scattering where we have four photon vertex and that coupling can be represented with a Lagrangian which is dimension eight and is written here. So to select the uh, signal events, we require photons to be high PT and invariant mass of the two photons is more than 350 GV. And we also require the diphoton apoplanarity to be very small because in elastic collision in the transverse plane, the two photons are back to back. So here is a distribution of uh, invariant mass of two photons uh, in the elastic collision case. And this is produced with 2016 data set with only 9.4 inverse femto ones from uh, which was what collected from the CMS and totem detector. And then we select uh, set constraints on these coupling strengths, zeta one and zeta two, when the other parameter is taken at its standard model value of zero. So those are- Time shown. is over. Yeah, I'm almost done. Okay, so uh, finally in EXO, we are trying to, uh, we are striving for analysis to digitize as much as possible so that we can allow interpretation of these results in future for any other BSM model. So here I'm giving two examples from what I showed today. So first is the strongly coupled dark matter, which have inclusive signal regions as well, uh, uh, without the requirement of semi-visible jets from BDT. So it doesn't rely on the jet substructure and it can be applied to any signal which has a resonance producing jets aligned with missing energy. So here are the signal region distributions of the MT in the two inclusive signal regions and all the details can be found in this HEPDATA record. We also have the multi-lepton uh, with Tau's analysis which have model independent categories in addition to the BDT based signal search. And those categories are defined with the help of the flavor of the light lepton uh, pair, the charge of the pair, and mass of the pair, which can be on Z, below Z, or above Z. And then in each of these categories, we plot a distribution of LT plus MET or ST to get these data tables where any other BSM signal which gives multi-lepton can be interpreted. 
So all of this information, along with lepton efficiency maps, to convert uh, to get the correct reconstructed yields from the gen level quantities, can be derived. And uh, heb data is under preparation, so please stay tuned for all the massive information. So uh, just to conclude, uh, I'll not go through this because I'm short of time, but you can take a look at the CMS exo reads so far uh, in this link, which points to the summary plot. And I'll just end with this slide, uh, which highlights a few more recent results from CMS exo in these final states. But since I did not have time to go into, uh, I invite you to take a look through these links. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. We have time for a couple of questions. Uh, if, if people... Yeah, Tamara, I see you raise your hands. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks a lot, Angita, for the very nice talk. Uh, I was wondering when you were presenting the multilepton uh, kind of general search with Taos on slide 15, um, that you mentioned that you do trainings and then you also split uh, the according to the, the categories per uh, year of the data set. Yeah. So is there a particular motivation for this? Uh, do you really gain in sensitivity by doing that? Okay, so since the analysis is done separately for 2016 and 17 and 18, and we only combine in the end at the like uh, at, at when we are computing the limits, so we wanted to have completely independent structure all throughout, also to account for any reconstruction effects or any other uh, like uh, dependence on like detector inefficiency or anything like mm -hmm. that. So just to keep it uh, completely unbiased, we kept three different trainings for three years and just combine the whole result in the end at the data card level. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we have time for another question. Tamara, you have another question? Okay. Uh, okay. So I have a question on slide 14. Yeah. Can you say a bit more about the the final states, okay, but how do you reconstruct the tau? Did you say, did I miss it? Mm -hmm. So the taus are hadronic taus. We require a deep neural network ID on the tau with different working mm -hmm. points for the versus jet and versus lepton uh, discrimination. So it's a hadronic tau. Uh, and the light so, photons, they can be produced from bosons or even from the tau decays. Okay, okay, so the taus decay hadronically. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. And and your reconstruction efficiency, do you do you do you remember or I can go and look it up? Right. So uh for the working point, the tight working point that we have in the analysis, the efficiency is around 40 to 60 percent, uh based on the uh eta region and one prong versus three yeah. prong. Uh, mm. yeah. Okay, okay, thank you very much. Thank That's, you. That's uh, impressive. Okay, so I don't see any more questions. So thank you very much for thank you. Uh, for your talk. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thank you. We can move on to the next speaker, which is Monica. I don't know if Monica is connected. I'm there. Hello. Um, you should uh, already see my slides, I guess. Yes, uh, they're not full screen. Uh, I'm coming, to... coming. Uh, okay, okay. Just to to check. Uh... This, you can already see the second slide. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. So then let's go on. Well, the slides are um, not full screen. I don't know whether uh, you again. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, it's fine. We can see them. So. But no, maybe... sorry. It should come. It's just my computer is a bit slow. Hmm. It's also important on. that we see what you see, otherwise, uh, then later yeah. The on. problem is my the, the pictures are covering part of my slide. It's, it's a bit annoying, but okay. Let us let's, let's get going. So uh, sorry, let's... just to make sure that we we actually see what you see. So you're you're not full screen, right? You 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 are still not full screen. I have yes. a, I see it's full screen. Yeah, oh. I know. Sometimes zoom, zoom uh. does that. So please just just go ahead and and uh, and uh, uh, let's keep them as, as they are. Uh, even if they are not full screen, uh, uh, okay, uh, so don't, don't worry. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. So I see you. No, have a, so, a sorry. I, I have to. Um, yeah. To get um, out, it's it's my 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 computer. No. Yeah, but we can we can see them fine. Uh, we can no, see but fine I now. I have a problem because I cannot. <laughs> ah, okay. Because uh, sorry, it's my it's a protection of my computer, which is. Always ah, now it's full screen. Now it's full screen. Now it's gone. Uh, uh. 
So I don't know what my thing does today. Okay, now it's not no, full screen, see, but it's not full screen. Let, let's leave it no. like this because yes, otherwise please, I cannot change yes. the slide. Sorry. So it's 12, 12 plus four. I will give yes. you the timing. Okay, thank you very much. Go ahead. Thank you. Okay, so let's move on to look at some results from Atlas. And I will first present you the searches for new physics with leptons in the final state. And before I get started, I just want to remind people why we like to have leptons in the final state, because they are easy to identify objects in our detector, and they can also come with a very good detector resolution, which of course also will help us in triggering on this event uh, during data taking. What I'm going to do in the talk, I will show you a selection of our more recent exotic searches. And I split up the talk in direct searches and indirect searches, but also would already like to point you to the next two talks after mine on vector-like quarks and leptoquarks, where you will, of course, also see some other examples where we will have leptons in the final states. And also on this slide, I, I give you already the complete, if you click on the link, you see all of our Atlas results. Okay, so let's start with searches for heavy W prime bosons. You're probably all aware of our results. We have already published quite a while ago on W prime bosons going either in an electron neutrino or a muon neutrino. So these searches have also now been complemented looking at the hadronic final states. So here we are looking for one hadronic tau and the ET miss final state. The main, main discriminant is the transverse mass. And the spectrum of the transverse mass can be seen in this plot here. And you see that what we have seen in the data and our standard model background predictions agree fairly well with each other. We don't see any deviation, which allowed us then to put limits on these W prime boson masses. And we can now exclude a W prime boson using as a benchmark the sequential standard model up to a mass of 5 GeV. And this compares also pretty well with what we have seen in the electron and muon final state, where our combined limit was 6 GeV. So we are also doing very, very well here in the tau channel. The next analysis I want to show you is about type three CSO heavy leptons. In these models, you have three heavy leptons. You have a Majorana neutrino and two charged heavy leptons. These are produced as pairs coming from either a W or a virtual Z boson. What we have been doing is we are looking at final states where you either end up with two leptons in the final state, three or, or four leptons. In the case of the analysis of with two leptons in the final state, we have devised it such that we end up with six signal regions. So we look at final states with two electrons, two muon, one electron, one muon, and then also look if those two leptons are opposite sign or same sign. Here in this plot, again, you see what we have observed in the data and confronted also with our background prediction. Again, no deviations are really seen in this one. And something similar can be seen on the right side in the plot where we give you the number of events in the three and four lepton final states where we ended up with five signal regions. Again, data and background prediction agree fairly well with each other. And this then allowed us to put a limit on those heavy leptons and we can now exclude them up to a mass of 910 GeV. Let's move on to a more kind of indirect search, which is in this case, a model independent search for any kind of new beyond standard model physics, as long as you end up with three or four leptons in the final state. So I really cover here a wide range of scenarios. And also this obviously includes models, which we might not have even thought about it. Again, we devise the analyzer such that we end up with different signal regions. And the classification is depending on the number, if I have three or four leptons in the final state, then I also look if two of those leptons might have come from a Z boson. 
And then I also devise it further looking, do I have significant ETMs in my final state or not? And then in each of these signal regions, I further subdivide my analysis looking at different invariant mass ranges. I mean with invariant mass here, the invariant mass of my leptons. So here on the bottom, you can see the number of events we have observed in each of the signal region and in each of our mass bins. Again, if you look at data over background, you see no significant deviations from the standard model predictions have been seen. And so then we could continue and extract our visible cross-section limits for each of the signal regions. And as you see here in our highest invariant mass bin, typically the cross-section limit is of the order of 0.1 femtobahn. In the lowest invariant mass bin, it's more of the order of one to several femtobahn. Now you might ask, how do these general multi-lepton searches compare with looking at more exclusive final states? And this I try to summarize in this slide here. So now I'm going back to the type three CISO model. Using the multi-lepton search by looking in a three-lepton final state, I can extract that my cross-section limit is 41 femtobahn for a 400 GeV heavy lepton and 12 femtobahn for a 700 GeV one. If I now look at one of our publications where we looked just at a dilepton final state, the limit was 22 femtobahn for 400 GeV heavy lepton and 7.5 for 700 GeV one. So you see the results are of a comparable level. Similar things I am seeing if I look at the doubly charged Higgs. So here also my results from the general search are comparable to the results from a dedicated search. So here my published result is just based on 35, 36 femtobahn of data. So overall, yes, my sensitivity is slightly worse, but you see it, the general search can still provide you a similar sensitivity as an exclusive search. Okay, so the next topic I want to cover is lepton flavor violation in that decade. Peter on Monday has already told you and showed you the results we had by looking at a Z boson decaying in an electron and muon state. So let me just remind you of some things here. So first of all, LHC is a Z boson factory. We really have huge statistics of Z bosons and lepton flavor violation being a rare decay means that if we see any deviation in this channel, this immediately indicates new physics beyond the standard model. So we have looked at final states with an electron and a muon, electron tau and a muon and a tau. What you do here as a strategy is you look at your dilepton invariant mass spectrum and try to see if around the Z boson mass you can see a small bump. As Peter already showed you on Monday, data and predictions from the standard model agree with each other, which allowed us to put a limit on the branching ratio of Z decaying to EMU, which is less than 3.04 times 10 to the minus seven. What Peter hasn't shown you is our results for the tau final states. So here you do obviously something very similar to the previous search. And now I'm looking at a tau E or a tau mu final state. This we have done first more recently looking at leptonically decaying taus. So here again, data and standard model prediction agree with each other, which allowed us to put a limit on the branching ratio for these decays, which are something of the order of seven times 10 to the minus six. We have also done a search for looking at the hadronically decaying taus. And this actually was a search we have published a bit earlier, which was already combining run one and run two results. The branching ratio levels we got out from this search you can see here, which is slightly less sensitive, but basically very, very similar. So now we can take those two measurements or three measurements if you like, and just do the overall com combination of the results. And then our branching ratio limit for Z decaying to electron tau is below five times 10 to the minus six. 
and in the mu tau decay, it is 6.5 times 10 to the minus six. These are now really our world best limits. The last analysis I want to show you is about contact interaction. So this is a search which is motivated by the hint for lepton flavor universality, which is violated in rare B meson decays. And we have also already heard in this conference about this. So here beyond standard model could appear between an initial state B quark and the final state S quark. And what we have been doing in Atlas is we have been looking at the final state with a B and an S and either two electrons or two muons in the final state. And now you can look for an asymmetry in these two final states, which is a direct probe from your physics. So again, here in this analysis, data agrees reasonably well with our standard model prediction. We haven't seen any significant deviation. And this then allowed us to put a limit on the scale of this interaction divided by the coupling strength, which is now excluded up to two TeV in the electron channel and 2.4 TeV in the muon channel. And for this, we use as a benchmark the model independent BSLL effective field theory model. Okay, so this One brings minute, but, uh, yeah. yes, <laughs> bang on, bang on, bang on. <laughs> yes, this already brings me to my summary. So, unfortunately, no evidence is yet seen for physics beyond the standard model for a multitude of final state and multitude of different models. And again, I want, li would like to stress, like already other speakers did, that our limits are constantly improving, not only thanks to the increase in statistics, but also due to the fact that we are now using more sophisticated analysis techniques. Many more RAN2 results are to come. And as you know, RAN3 is just lurking around the corner. And hopefully, ultimately, this is more statistics, looking at more final states, more different model. This will allow us then to catch a glimpse of beyond standard model physics in the future. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much uh, for the talk, very interesting. Are there any questions? Otherwise I, I have one. Uh, so I, I ask you this question. So I see these nice results of Atlas with uh, taus in the final state. Uh, also in the previous presentation. Now, I ask you this question, how far away do you think Atlas is from giving us a result, uh, placing limits on, I call HNL, but it can be, you know, sterile neutrino type of signal coupling to the tau lepton. Because if you do that, then like, if you look at the parameter space coupling with the tau, there's basically no limits, like uh, it's, it's a free, it's an empty field. Yes, these are analyzers which are ongoing. And as you know, the first results are typically done using electron and muon in the final state because they are always obviously a bit easier to identify in our detector. Right, right. And the TAUS always comes typically as a, if, if you like, as a second paper. So we are looking at it. These limits will come or observation will come, of course. This would <laughs> be what we are hoping for. but. Uh, not immediately right right and and what's the why is it harder to do with hnls because i see this across the board also lacb also cms i think hnl is perhaps something which is a bit newer so and i think typically those analyzes started a little bit later for us because they are now, it's only now that they, they are really coming mainstream. Okay, so you don't think it's, a, it's an intrinsic problem, it's just a matter of priorities. No. Okay. Yes, interesting. in interesting. a certain way, yeah. because you know, also lots of people then sure, in the sure. next iteration, yeah. they stay on the same analysis. Right, right, this makes sense, yes. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, any more questions? I don't see them. Well, thank you, this was very interesting. Um, we can move on then to the next, uh, our next okay. speaker, which is Angela. Okay. 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 I have a one small problem. I don't yes. get the button anymore for the 
getting rid yes. of my slides. I do it for you. Ah, I do for you. No, I found it. Oh, you did it. Okay. Yeah, okay. something changed on my computer. <laughs> Don't ask me why. <laughs> sorry, sorry for the mess with my Zoom. <laughs> no worries. Thank you very much. Okay, Angela, uh, are you connected? Yes? Uh, yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you well. Can you just share have, the slides? Yes, I'm trying to share, but I, I just have some small issue with my Zoom. Uh, I, I can hope share the, the connection slides. Will, uh, yeah, um, I can try. Um, maybe, yeah, I forgot. We can you, you tell uh, me if you want, I can do it. Uh, please, yeah, can please can you please share somehow my Zoom is... Um, yes, I will do not it now. stable. Okay, thank you very much. One sec, let me do it. So these are your slides, can you see them? Um, not yet, I will switch off the camera, sorry, because uh, Zoom is starting to make trouble with my internet connection. Yes, well, can you see the slides? Um, yeah, um, no, not yet. Um, uh, this is weird, can people see the slides? Yes, yes. 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 Can you okay, see them on uh, full screen? Um, Zoom is not responding. Um, right. So yeah, I'm having some internet issue. Uh, okay, no worries. Uh, you can tell me the slide number and then we can do the talk this way. What about that? Let me just okay. check the timing for you. It's 12 plus four, I see. Okay, let's get cracking. Thank you very much. Angela from the Laboratoire de Physique de Clermont. Um, yeah, thanks. Thank you very much. I will be talking about searches for new uh, phenomena in final states with third generation quarks using the Atlas detector. Please go to slide two. Done. Uh, Okay, so uh, there are many reasons to search for physics in these final states. So there is this large top Yukawa coupling to the Higgs boson, um, and as well you have the radiative connection to the to the to the top um, quark from the top quark to the Higgs propagator, which leads to quadratic divergences in the Higgs boson mass. So one basically searches for mechanism to cancel those correction instead of fine tuning, for instance, with new particles in the loop. So there are many new physics models, like for instance, composite Higgs models and so on, which predicts new particle coupling preferentially to the third generation quarks, like vector-like quarks, new heavy gauge bosons, and heavy top resonances. And these, uh, this talk covers uh, recent searches for these new physics and um, using data from the Atlas experiment from uh, LHC12. So can you please go to the next slide? Done. Thank you. Thank you. So um, um, all of these searches, of course, rely heavily on the identification of um, hadronic jets from top bottom quarks. This is an important aspect in the rejection of um, background from multi-jet events. So for instance, for top quarks from having new physics decay, I expect it to be produced with high uh, I transverse momentum, and the top decay products are therefore collimated in single large radius uh, jets, which is shown here as an illustration on the right hand side. So there are two, they, they can, so this uh, larger jet has typically some jet substructure, and this can be exploited to discriminate the top quarks for multi-jet events. For instance, there are two approaches. So for instance, using cut-based approach, like cuts on the number of larger jets constituents, jet mass and so on. But there's also a dedicated top tag and Atlas chain with a deep neural network, which was already presented by Jan, Jan Lin's talk, uh, which are linked here. So if you go to the next slide, to slide four. Yes. The same for B quarks, they also have a very distinct uh, signature. So um, they have a long lifetime. So they have, um, they have some uh, displaced secondary vertices in the, in the, in the jet. So uh, this, this, and, and this and many more properties can be used uh, in the construction of Atlas B taggers. This um, Atlas uses to train those B taggers, uses a deep neural network. Um, so this is an improvement with respect to previously trained taggers using boosted precision trees. So if you look at the right hand plot here, so um, for the, the, which shows the light flavor jet rejection. So you have this uh, um, red to, to green line, which shows here this improvement. And as well, latest B taggers are also input to the, in, in, in the deep neural network, in addition information from the current neural networks to exploit correlation between the track impact parameters in the jets. So this is then the blue line. So there are dedicated B taggers for particle flow jets, so which use uh, measurement for the track and the calorimeter and variable radius track jets, which just use track and which uh, have a variable radius, but this also was uh, already presented by Yan Lin. So if you go to the next slide, so I will okay. to slide five. So thank you. Um, so, um, so I will be talking a lot about searches for vector-like quarks. So I'm going to present here this, mod this, this, um, this new physics model here um, in, in this slide. 
So this uh, uh, pretty sad, um, this heavy vector-like quarks are predicted in many models, especially those I'm aimed at solving the hierarchy problem. So is this, uh, there is an additional loop which is uh, supposed to cancel these divergences from the from the top loop to the Higgs propagator, and they're called vector-like because left and right general components have the same color and electrical quantum numbers. So they are different representations, so singlet, doublet, and triplet representations, which basically re defines the relative coupling to the to the to the both the standard model both and then this branching ratio, and um, and, and they're expected to decay to bosons and mainly to top or bottom quarks. So here you have the decay here on this Feynman diagram on the right hand side. They can be pair produced and singly produced. The pair, pair production has the advantage that it's mostly model independent. The cross section only depends on the VEQ mass. Whereas so the single production, you have this vertex to the standard model um, particles and you have an, an you have a couple, additional coupling to the standard model particles. But it's also very interesting because because also the single production could dominate it for large VQ masses. So if you go to slide six, so here I present the first um, um, search for, so I present at first a search for VQ pair produced um, vector like top quarks decaying to CT plus X. So this, um, so this, um, the, the, the search selects leptonically decaying Z bosons and uh, selects two or three leptons in the final state. Then the second VLQ is supposed to, is expected to is, um, is expected to decay hadronically, and in order to optimize the sensitivity to the second, uh, um, as hadronically decaying VLQ, one. Um, when trains a multi-class deep neural network and the clustered larger jets um, to, to, to target specifically um, um, hadronically decaying um, uh, VAQs to top um, vector boson or Higgs, and this I call MCBOT. And then they define exclusive event categories based on kinematic properties, um, the BTAC decision and the MCBOT decision to the define the signal sensitive region, control and validation region. And we have here a table um, displaying like all of these, these, these region here. And um, in the plot below, you have also a summary on all of these regions. And then they do have combined fit uh, to, to all those regions to, this discriminate, to a discriminating variable to extract the signal and constrain the background um, estimated by Monte Carlo. This is the result, the useful run through Atlas data, and they have found no deviation and they set limits. So, in, as a function of the different representation, so they can set limit on vector like top quarks up to 1.6 uh, TV. And they set also um, 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 limits as a function of the, of the VAQ branching ratios to the standard model boson. And this search um, 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 improves the, the previous limits using only 2015 and 2016 Atlas data by more than 200 GV. So coming to slide eight, to a search for singly produced vector-like quarks decaying. Sorry, to... slide seven. Ah, slide. Ah, slide. Oh, sorry. Uh, we already. Oh, sorry. So slide seven um, discussed the limits from this um, single production vector, the spare production vector-like quark search, and now I'm coming to slide eight. Yes, exactly. Sorry, to slide eight from the from the um, another sing so the single production, a search for single produced uh, via a vector like top quarks decaying is so please go to slide eight. To yes, I'm on slide eight. Okay, yes, thank you. To, to HT or CT. And uh, this is search um, um, expects, selects one lepton in the final state, which is expected to come from the top quark decay. And again, here's the search uh, categorizes the uh, phase space in exclusive signal sensitive control and validation region to constrain uh, different signal models and standard model uh, backgrounds. And so, um, and they use also to, to, to define specific regions sensitive to each of the decay to HT or CT. They, um, they use the properties of the reclustered larger TET to, um, to be sensitive to um, final states containing. Um, boosted Higgs, a vector boson, or top quarks. And they use a cut based approach. Um, so, the two cuts on the larger jet mass PT or number of constituents. Then they use a data driven correction um, to the dominant Monte Carlo estimated background using a two derivating techniques. And then they do a combined fit to all of this region that you can uh, see here a summary on the right hand side um, to, to a discriminating variable to extract the signal and improve the background description. On slide nine, you have the you have the result. They use full run to atlas data. They see no deviations, so they set limits in terms of the of the VAQ mass. But for each of the, for, for for different coupling scenarios, so you can see here one example on the left hand side, and then the, each of those they um, and also in terms 
of the, the set limits also in terms of the V uh, on the coupling uh, mass uh, mass plane, so where each of the left hand side is represents a slice on the on the right hand side. So um, if you go to slide ten, I present here a search for singly produced vector like bottom quarks this time. Um, so this um, so this uh, the, the, the vector like bottom quarks decays to a B quark and a boosted Higgs boson, which decays uh, then to 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 B quarks. And um, the, the boosted, uh, so this has three B quarks in the final state. So they identify the boosted Higgs boson using cut based approach and the associated B tag variable radius um, track jets in, 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 the, in the larger jet. They use um, a purely data driven background, uh, a background estimate to constrain the, the dominant multi jet background. So they use the method they use is the ADCD method, and this is a very common method. Um, um, for for in in alhadronic um, in, in the searches with alhadronic final states, so you have you have us um, on the left hand side on the bottom you have a um, yeah the, um, you have a um, a, um, um, I show a small uh, illustration how to do the how this works. So you have basically a grid of control and a signal region, and then you um, um, you derive a transfer factor using orthogonal region C and D, and apply the transfer factor to region B in order to to, to, to extrapolate to region A, so to estimate your multi-jet background and in the signal region um, 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 on, on, on um, region A. Um, so then uh, they do a maximum likelihood fit to the reconstructed uh, VLB mass, which is the Higgs, the, the identified Higgs boson and the, and the B quark. And then um, they set limits on, um, in, as, a, as a function of the VLB mass and the, and the, and the coupling, which you see here on the, on the, on the bottom here. And uh, say the previous limits were about, and for a doublet scenario, about 1.2 TV. And here they managed to a lot extend the phase space of the of the limits, but um, but as a function, always as a function of the coupling, uh, depending on the coupling. So if you go to slide eleven, here I uh, present a brand new search for um, a single vector like top work decaying to a Higgs boson, which decays um, um, to two B quarks and a, and a hadronically decaying top work. So um, this you see an illustration of this final state here in this uh, yeah in. Uh, in this um, illustration here on the left hand side. So um, the, the top and the Higgs are reconstructed using the leading and subleading larger jets. They are supposed to be boosted. The identification is done using the jet mass and the DNN top tagger for the top. And cuts on the jet substructure variable are, are used to, to define the Higgs boson. Um, so they classify the events according to the number of the Higgs, the number of the Higgs and the top tags, and the B tag via track jet associated with the larger jet. Then they can define as well a grid of signal region, TG bar normalization region, control and validation region. And then they use they have this grid again, and then they use the, the, the ABCD method in order to derive the dominant, to estimate the dominant multi jet uh, background. Then they do uh, they reconstruct the invariant mass of the VAQ using the top and the Higgs. And then they do a bin likelihood fit to the die jet invariant mass distribution simultaneously in the signal region and the TT bar normalization region. And they fit the signal uh, model, a uh, signal model cross section, and the TT bar normalization. Again, they set limit as a function of the VAQ mass and the couplings, and they can exclude um, VAQ masses up to 2.3 TV, um, depending on the coupling uh, kappa. And really, like boosted the, the exploitation of boosted topology, jet tagging, and the multi jet estimation technique um, helps to improve a lot the limit. So, time leaving is now, over. excuse me, time is over. Oh, okay. Um, I will just uh, go very quickly. So, if you go to slide 12, so I'm leaving me now this vector like quark searches and instead go to heavy um, um, gauge boson searches. Here's a search for, for um, a heavy W prime. Um, they came to a boosted top and a B quark. And in this search, really, the improved top and B quark identification helped to improve the sensitivity. Again, they define a grid of signal and control region using the DNN top tag, tag category, the B quark from the WDK and the B tag jet in the larger jet. And they use an ABCD method to, to estimate the background. So then to fit in the, the, the um, as a, um, they do a combined fit to the three signal sensitive region of the TT bar multi jet estimate and, and the signal model in the W prime invariant mass distribution and manage to um, exclude um, W prime in the model um, um, up to 4.4 TV, which is uh, one, one TV better than uh, previously, the previous limit. 
Here is a search for um, C, pri um, C prime decaying to, do, to, to B quarks. There is a, there's been a search already um, for, for di um, diabetic resonances. However, what is new in the search that they use the, that they require a third of four jet and the uh, MPT also to be B-tagged. And the, um, this it was not included by the previous search um, for diabetic resonances. Also, they use a new tri jet trigger with asymmetric PD threshold introduced in 2017. So they only use 2017 and 2018 Atlas data. They have the, 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 the dominant background for multi chat um, events, which are also estimated in a fully data driven way using a functional decomposition method. Then they do a scan on this invariant mass using Bump Hunter, and they manage to improve the sensitivity with respect to the Divi chat um, resonance search by 20 to 50 per, by 20 to 50 percent in the probe mass scale. Then there is another search, uh, which I will not go into detail now, for, for heavy resonances in top um, quark final state, also for a C prime decaying to, to top quarks, where the top quarks are um, also um, reconstructed as larger jet, but using a cut based approach. Um, in, in the end, they do um, as interpretation um, in terms of a model independent search for resonance in this um, diet Z prime invariant mass, reconstructed diet invariant mass. And um, a model independent use, as interpretation using Bump Hunter, and also a model dependent a search for a color signal top Felix C prime. And you see the, um, 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 the results here on the right hand side. And this is a very complicated one in states, and they are not really sensitive here. So um, in slide 15, there is a short summary. So oh, we didn't find slide? anything. Slide 15. Okay. So they didn't really find. Uh, they didn't. We didn't find. Maybe anything. we can skip this and have a quest. Oh no! Uh, yeah. And have a question instead. What do you think? Uh, yeah, I just basically say we didn't find anything, and uh, but we improved the limits, and we're looking forward to run three later. Thanks okay. so much. No worries. We a very very short time. Uh, I don't know if there are any questions from the audience. I don't see any questions, so I'm going to ask you a very brief question about this uh, new result that you presented on slide 11. I see you put yes. uh, a limit on the bottom right. So how does it compare with the previous results from other experiments? Um, so, so yeah, so um, what is so it improves by much, but I do not remember by how much now, but um, in principle, the previous um, um, Previous limits for using 2015 2016 data from the combined searches were about from the combination of all the searches were about um, 1.3, 1.2, 1.3 TV. Yeah, sure, I understand. Is, I understand you do better than yourself in the past, but I was wondering like, is it world leading? Uh, what are other limits in the region? Other experiments uh, are placing a similar constraint or not? Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, so, this. Um, Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, these are very. Um, no worries. I can. Results. I can check. Uh, I cannot, yeah, yeah, I, can I, check I have to follow up on that. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I'm gonna stop sharing, and we can move to the next uh, speaker. Uh, okay. So this is Tamara from CERN. Okay. Hi. Can you hear me Hello. and see the slides? Yes, uh, the slides are not full screen, but uh, yes, I'll keep it like that because it does not work. <laughs> so I won't, I won't even try. Okay, it's, it must be this software that uh, that that uh, you and and Monica. Were yes, using. yes, uh, and others don't really work. So so yeah, that this is the the biggest I can show it. Okay, no worries. Okay, okay so I see you have uh, fourteen plus sorry twelve plus four, so twelve okay. minute, minutes from now. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Great. Then, uh, yeah, good morning, everybody. Uh, thanks uh, for, for the invitation. It's a pleasure to show you the latest um, results from searches for leptoquarks with the Atlas detector. And before we dive into the actual results, uh, I wanted to remind you why leptoquarks are, are interesting to look at. And uh, for that, I go back to the extensive flavor puzzle that the Sunan model is. And if you remember, we have our six quarks and the six leptons, which are organized in the three generations of increasing mass which prompts the, the question of why do we see the similar structure between quarks and leptons? Could there be maybe an underlying symmetry that connects both sectors? So there have been many grand unified theories from Patti Salam SU4 to RPD SUSI that predict these hypothetical leptocore particles that as the name says, carry both lepton and baron numbers. 
Uh, leptoquarks are color triplet bosons with a fractional electric charge, and they can mediate the flavor change in neutral currents and enable violation of lepton flavor universality. Leptoquarks have been in the theory world for, for quite some time around, but uh, it's been recent in the past years with the um, appearance of hints for lepton flavor universality violation observed in the charged and neutral current processes in B-physics that leptoquarks searches have uh, gained uh, quite a lot of, of interest and momentum. And uh, okay, there are many observables where, where these tensions are, are observed, but I highlight here the well-known RD star and RK star, where we're comparing here the ratio of branching ratios uh, of, of BDKs, uh, either comparing taus versus light leptons or muons versus, versus electrons. And here we're seeing uh, tensions at the level of 3.1 uh, sigma with respect to the standard model. So if we assume that there is new physics behind this, uh, these tensions, uh, the size of the anomaly seems to suggest a tree-level mediator where leptoquarks seem to be one of the favorite candidates. And you see here on the right-hand side, uh, the equivalent Feynman diagram with a leptoquark mediator uh, compared to the standard model one that would explain precisely these two uh, uh, processes. So from also the size of the anomalies, it would seem that either two scalar or a single vector leptoquark could explain uh, the, the level of, of the tensions. And if we also look at the Feynman diagrams, uh, you can see that leptoquark decays into both flavor diagonal, but also cross-generational finite state are important. And this also uh, inspired uh, the, the way we do the, our search strategy for leptoquarks in ATLAS. So moving to the next slide, uh, just also for overall information, leptoquarks can be produced and decay in various modes. We have the per production that, as you see, uh, profits from the large QCD uh, production at the LHC, and we can have here resonant leptoquark produced. Whereas the single and the off-shell production, uh, the cross-section here starts to depend um, uh, with respect, it starts to depend uh, based on, on this parameter lambda that determines the couplings of the leptoquark to the quark and lepton uh, via the UCAP interaction. So um, yes, and these two single and off-shell uh, production uh, are sensitive to higher leptoquark masses for sufficiently high lambda. There is also the so-called single leptoquark resonant production that also lately has gained some, some interest, where even though we would, we would need a lepton in the initial state and the PDF for leptons inside the protons are very small, uh, the cross-section would be then compensated by the resonant enhancement. So overall, then it's also quite competitive with the other uh, production modes. So as I said, in ATLAS, uh, we started with a simplified search strategy that targets certain finite states. We're looking for what we call up and down leptoquarks that have these uh, fractional electric charges. And additionally, aside from the, the lambda parameter, we also have this B or branching ratio parameter um, that indicates the decays either into uh, neutrinos or uh, charged leptons. And I give you in this table, the example of the third generation uh, flavor diagonal scalar leptoquark decays. Uh, and of course, as you will see later, we'll also be interested in the points in between one and, and zero. So we started with a thorough search for per production of scalar leptoquarks, but uh, we're already uh, reinterpreting many of these results based on le vector leptoquarks as well. So in this slide, I show the state of the art of scalar leptoquark per production. And uh, you see here the latest results, both from Atlas and CMS. Unfortunately, nothing uh, has been observed, uh, no excess have been observed yet, so we've set uh, limits uh, on the scalar leptoquark mass, and you see that they are in general quite competitive between the, the two experiments. And I highlight here with the three stars, the three analyses, since there are many, the three I want to focus on uh, in this talk. And I actually show on slide six, these same three analyses, but now um, based on, on the, the type of analysis uh, that is optimized based on uh, B equal one, which would be the top tau, top tau, B equals zero, which is the B nu, B nu uh, decay. But we also have an analysis optimized to B equals 0 0.5, which would target finite states of top tau, B nu, or top nu, B tau. Uh, just to say that the leptoquark simulation uh, that we use is um, at next, next to leading order QCDR accuracy with Madcraft plus Pythia, and the cross section. Uh, we profit here from the equivalence to per produce top squarks, and uh, we can use the approximate next to next to leading order QCD plus next to next to leading log accuracy. 
I won't be covering the rest just because of lack of time, but just to mention that these two analyses here above uh, are precisely these leptoquark searches that target cross-generational decays. So we look here at B, E, B, mu, B, E, B, B, mu, B, mu, and similarly with the top quark. And uh, yeah, we also produced these summary plots where we overlaid the, the limits. And uh, as you see, they're also quite uh, stringent, the limits that we're setting at the moment. So we dive, dive into the, the first analysis, the leptocore preproduction to top tau, top tau. This is the first dedicated atlas search of its kind. And if we expand the tau and the top uh, decays, you see that we end up with a large multiplicity of objects. So at the end, we categorize our signal regions into one lepton plus at least one tau, two lepton opposite sign plus at least one tau, and what we call the multi-lepton channel, which is a two lepton same sign or three lepton plus at least one tau. Uh, we, we require at least two jets from which at least uh, one should be B-tagged, and events are selected with a single and the dilepton trigger. In the multi-lepton channel, we additionally require tighter light lepton isolation identification to reduce the contribution from non-prom lepton backgrounds. But if you see the, the pie chart uh, here from the various signal regions uh, and the, you see the background contributions, um, what I can notice that there is a quite a diversity of, of background contamination uh, depending on the region we're looking at. So that's why we also have dedicated control regions for to study and also validate each of them. Finally, the effective mass is the discriminating variable that we, we're using in the signal regions. And this is defined as the scalar sum of the transverse momentum of all our visible objects plus the missing transverse energy. Uh, at the end of the day, we make a simultaneous fit of seven signal regions and 15 control regions. The main systematic uncertainties originate from tau identification and energy scale calibration and from TTVAR modeling uncertainties. Um, from the combination, the sensitivity is mostly led by the one lepton plus at least one tau channel. And uh, the, the, the search is uh, overall statistically limited, especially at high masses where we start to become quite sensitive. As you see from the summary of the signal regions here at the bottom left-hand side, there is no significant excess of the sun and model background process. So we set limits on the mass, excluding leptoquark masses below 1.43 TB for the hypothesis of B equal one. But we also managed to set quite stringent limits for B equals 0 0.5, excluding leftover masses below 1.22 TB. Moving now to the B equals 0 0.5 um, optimized analysis. So looking at top tau B nu or top nu B tau. Uh, here we exploit the presence of the neutrino in the final state. Uh, so we select events with a missing transverse energy trigger. And we also set a quite large uh, cut on the offline missing transverse energy. We require a one hadronically decaying tau, no light leptons, and at least two B jets. And as you see in this nice uh, diagram here at the bottom, uh, aside from the signal region, we also have dedicated control regions and validation regions to control the two main backgrounds, which are TT bar with one real tau and a single top over here. And I won't go into detail on the, the, the feed results, but I can say that the, there is a large impact from the single top mostly WT and TTVAR interference modeling that is then reflected also in the measured uh, single top normalization correction. Uh, just to mention here that uh, the variables that are mostly used to define these regions are the ST, which is the sum of, scale, of transverse momentum of the tau and the two leading jets, and also various uh, transverse masses of uh, taus or B jets. And finally, in the signal region, we use the transverse momentum of the tau as discriminating variable. And you can see here in light blue, the leptoquark shape uh, that picks at, at higher values uh, of, of this observable compared to the background. Two minutes to go. Two minutes. OK. So um, nothing is observed here. So um, strong, the strongest limits uh, to date on per produced third uh, generation scalar leptoquarks for B equals 0 0.5 are set for leptoquark up and down at the top. But also here we have the first interpretation for vector leptoquarks in Atlas, which is shown at the bottom for the minimal coupling scenario and the young Mills scenario. Moving now quickly to the B new B new analysis. This is actually a reinterpretation from a SUSI search for per-produced bottoms decaying into a big quark and a stable neutralino. So we have no uh, leptons in the final state. There are three signal regions defined here based on the different ranges that it targets on the, the splitting of mass between the spot bottom and the neutralino. 
And for the lepto core interpretation, we take the best limits uh, of the sum of A and B or C. Nothing is observed here either. So lepto quark masses are excluded below 1.26 TV for B equals zero and 0 0.4 TV for B equals 0 0.95. I chose also these three analyses because, as you see in this overlaid uh, plot, uh, they cover the full phase space of our branching ratio versus uh, mass of the leptoquark down. And uh, as you can imagine, the next natural step here will be to combine us this analysis, which we hope also to, to do very soon. And just for, for completeness, on the right hand side, you see a similar overlaid plot, but for the leptoquark app search. Before concluding, I want to point out that aside from these per production uh, searches, we also uh, released the first Atlas single leptoquark production limits last summer. Uh, this one assumes leptoquark couplings to E up quark and mu C quark. And uh, as you can see on the Feynman diagram here, um, because of the, the production mode and the PDF of the proton, we expect to have more E plus mu minus C final state than E minus mu plus. And this uh, fact is exploited in the event selection. And you can see that we use here the lepton charge asymmetry. Uh, and additionally, we use this HP variable, which is the sum of the transit momentum of electron, muon, and leading jet um, as, as yeah, discriminating variable with the, um, the scalar uh, leptoquark peaking at, at higher values. And uh, unfortunately, nothing is observed, but uh, there is an, a substantial amount of additional exclusion uh, on the, um, in this uh, 2D space between the coupling and the mass of the scalar leptoquark with respect to a previous Atlas search. Uh, so we're excluding from 0 0.46 uh, coupling uh, value. We're excluding now leptoquark masses above 1.42 uh, TV up to uh, couplings of one uh, at which we are, we're excluding 1.88 uh, TV. You're one minute over time. Okay, I mean, this is just the conclusions, um, and I hope I, I, I managed to, to at least give you some examples of the thorough search we're doing on scalar leptoquarks. And uh, this is clearly just the start. There are many more scenarios uh, to be covered from vector leptoquarks to the remaining production modes. And since most of these searches are statistically limited, we also expect RAN3 and HILOM LLC to, to provide increased sensitivity to these searches with the final goal to basically cover completely this, uh, the phase space of coupling versus laptop work and not just set limits, but hopefully discovering new physics. So thanks for your attention. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so now we have time for discussion. So I see a question from Kita. Hi, yes, um, nice talk, Tamara. I wanted to ask one question about slide nine, where you make the comparisons between CMS and Atlas. Mm -hmm. Oh no, slide eight then maybe. I don't know which slide it was. Uh, the comparison, with, I, yes, here. Sorry. Yeah, so uh, I was just wondering for the T tau, the difference between both experiments is really large. Mm -hmm. Is it because uh, there's some final states missing or what is the reason here? Yeah, that, that's a very good question. And also within Atlas, we try to do a thorough comparison. So we find that there are actually many differences uh, that go from the, for example, tau identification uh, efficiencies uh, that each of the experiments used were, were um, Atlas, for example, used a much higher efficiency to event selection. Also, uh, we include additional finite states like this uh, multilepton finite states, which are not included in CMS. And, and yes, everything put together leads to, to it seems also expected higher, um, uh, more sensitive analysis. Yeah, but it was just that the difference is quite large. That's why. Yes. I was, yeah. Yes. No. 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 It's it's a good uh, remark. Yeah. Indeed. Very interesting. Okay. Uh, do we have any other questions? Uh, it seems not. So I had a question about uh, your slide uh, thirteen. So I was trying to understand here. So can you? Elaborate on on how would you do such combinations? Uh, I mean, in, in the statistical sense. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Like uh, statistically speaking, yes. Right. I mean, the, the condition is that um, that the regions that we're looking at in each of the analyses are mostly orthogonal among them, and mm. this is usually the case. Okay, so you have very little correlation. 
That's right. Yes. Yes. Okay, I understand. I understand. So you basically sit in a place. You you make sure you're sitting in a place where you have essentially zero correlation. Therefore, you can make a combination. That's right. That's right. Okay. Sorry, I didn't understand that. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. This Thanks. was very interesting. Okay, the time is up, so we can move on to the last speaker of the session, which is Giuliano, also from CERN. Hello. So, okay, let me share the slides. Please. Can you see I them? I can see them. Yeah, full screen. Yes, yes. Okay. So, good. good. So, you also have, uh, seems to me, uh, 12 plus 4. Please go ahead. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so yes, in this presentation, I will uh, show you the most recent results uh, of the Atlas experiment in uh, the Longley particle scenarios. So just to put some context on the Longley particle searches, as you know, LST experiments have uh, extensive research for new physics in uh, the prompt and visible final state if you want to, because the detectors uh, have been uh, uh, built to, to, to look for prompt signatures, basically, and to, sort of, uh, to discover the X boson. But more and more BSM theories uh, are motivating displays uh, signatures based on different arguments. So in the past, the um, experimental theoretical community uh, together uh, worked to define the benchmark signals uh, in order also to provide some guidelines for the, for the searches of collided experiments. Uh, in Atlas, uh, we have uh, a vast LLP long wave particle search program. Uh, I don't have time to talk about uh, this uh, comprehensively, but uh, I will mention the, uh, we'll go through the most recent results, which are searching for displaced vertices in the inner detector with these jets, uh, displaced vertices in the immune spectrometer, and uh, the search for lepton jets with the uh, recent results uh, which are published, which is new for this conference. Uh, so, uh, starting from the uh, displaced vertices in the tracker, so in the inner detector, the signature is uh, uh, basically, I mean, the search is looking for uh, beyond the standard model X decays into only particles, which are decaying in volume. So here we exploit the, the red channel in order to, yeah, to use the, um, to target these events with, uh, by using lepton triggers. And uh, the three main steps to reconstruct the, uh, to define the signal region are based on the event selection with displaced jet candidates based on uh, the chart hadron fraction, which uh, needs to be low, and uh, with the few number of tracks matched to the time period. We use the large radius tracking, uh, an algorithm that is uh, uh, targeting the selection of uh, high impact parameter tracks, which are not selected by the standard track algorithm. And then these are used to reconstruct two displaced vertices in the inner detector, which are matched to the jet that are identified in the reconstructing the event. The two main key selection variables are the number of tracks per vertex and the reduced mass, defined as the ratio of the uh, invariant mass of the vertex and the uh, distance, relative distance between the tracks that uh, form the vertex and the displaced vertex itself. And as you can see, the, uh, the power of this uh, discrimination variable, which uh, allows us to reduce uh, and to suppress the, uh, the background which is coming basically from combinatorial tracks, which is from display vertices. Um, the um, residual backgrounds uh, are not standard, so it's hard to uh, trust and, uh, on the simulations, on Monte Carlo simulations. So we exploit data driven background uh, um, techniques uh, to define the per jet probability of finding a displaced vertex in a contour region defined with just uh, one displaced vertex in the final state. Uh, the, the, the plane which is used uh, is uh, based on two variables that are correlated with this probability, which are the transfer momentum and the beta discriminant. And the total background estimation comes uh, about 1.3 plus or minus 3.3 events. No events of set are uh, in the signal region found. So we set limits on the branch ratio of the X into long particles uh, down to 5%. And in the 10% level, which is something interesting, we, uh, in the, we can exclude the lifetime regime between 10 and 100 millimeter, which is closing basically the gap that we had in, with the experimental um, uh, constraints from the Atlas searches between the prompt and the long particle searches. Um, moving to the outer 
side of the detector on the immune spectrometer. Also in this case, a similar signature is probed uh, with the X decays into long lived particles decaying in, in, uh, in fermions. And here, what we search for are narrow and high multiplicity, multiplicity adron showers in the muon detector. Uh, these uh, uh, tracks are, are not matched to the track, to any tracks in the in the detector. And uh, to the to track these events, we need to take triggers, which are selecting events uh, with a cluster of at least uh, uh, three or four regional interests in the barrel, which are built uh, in a in a cone around the uh, level one muon triggers, which are identified with the RPC uh, layers. Um, later, we um, use the dedicated vertex algorithm, which is reconstructing vertices with uh, a number of, with at least three or four tracklets, which are these muon segments, uh, exploiting basically the multi-layer separation in the MDT chambers, which are basically uh, having a different topology with respect to the standard muon segment. Okay. So even in this case, the uh, re residual relic, uh, let's say, background events uh, are not coming from standard model, standard model processes, if you want. So it's uh, it's uh, not easy to uh, simulate this uh, this kind of uh, event topology. So we use uh, data-driven estimations, and the main backgrounds are coming from punch-through jets, which are jets that are not contained in the calorimeter layers and ends in the mean spectrometer. spectrometer. And the beam induced background, which are basically coming from the beam allo, uh, which are which is colliding with the collimators of the accelerator and ending in the detector. So uh, yes, as I was saying, the data-driven background estimation is used, uh, and uh, the number of uh, uh, total background events in the signal region is uh, of the order of 0.3 events. So here we are really close to the background zero conditions and no events uh, are observed here in this case in the signal region and we can set limits on the relation of the x uh, into long-lived particles that they were order of 0.1 percent which is basically the, the level of the ratio of the uh, standard model x decaying in this particle. Um, moving to the new results for this conference uh, which is the uh, search for a left on chest uh, the event topology is uh, basically uh, predicting light less lonely particles decaying into collimated jet structures, uh, either in the leptons or in light hadrons. These are motivated by dark photon uh, theories, where the coupling strength is related to the uh, displacement uh, of the decay. Uh, the two event topology depends on the uh, decay of, the, of these dark photons. So we have a collimated bunch of muons coming from the muon decay, uh, characterized by low PT muons, which are up to trigger, and the background is mainly coming from cosmic rays, uh, or with the uh, decays in uh, electrons or hadrons, uh, which uh, basically produce displaced jets with uh, most of the energy deposited in the hadron accelerator. And here, the QCD events uh, are dominated by background. So there are more details also in the Alessandro's poster that uh, have been presented in the past days that I encourage you to, uh, to look at. Um, and uh, in the, the NANTI strategy basically looks at uh, the two production modes of the gluon gluon fusion and the WH. Uh, the first uh, uses uh, dedicated uh, triggers, and uh, the WH instead is uh, exploiting the signal left trigger. So we define uh, uh, six signal region categories, uh, basically uh, defined from the production mode and the finance state topology, so mion channel and cover channel. And uh, two neural network targets have been defined to suppress the background. Uh, for the muon channels, we have a, a dense neural network, which is a first track target. Uh, it is aimed to reject cosmic and it's based on the track information. And is uh, rejecting uh, an order of magnitude, suppressing an order of magnitude of the cosmic. Um, the, for the color channels, we have a convolutional neural network, which is a novelty target. Uh, which is trained on uh, low-level inputs, so basically 3D jet images of the, from the calorimeter clusters. And this is able to reduce by a factor of almost 20 the QCD backgrounds and 70% of the beam induced background. Um, even in this case, of course, we use data-driven techniques based on ABCD methods. And uh, 
no data access is found. So even in this case, so we set limits. This time in the 2D plane of the dark photon mass versus the uh, coupling of the dark photon, which is, as I was saying before, related to displacement. And uh, we can see here that uh, for the first time, uh, we can show exclusion in the fully electronic channel. And uh, even in this case, we can uh, exclude down to a branch special level of the deep point quantum. Um, just to give you an overview of the program in Atlas, uh, which is not just focused on the long wave particle searches to, to, search, uh, or to constrain the proper lifetime uh, uh, regimes uh, of, the, of the particles, uh, we can look at such resonant searches and reinterpreting these uh, prompt, uh, uh, let's say, signatures, exploiting, for example, the standard beta algorithm which can be performed for uh, uh, a sizable lifetime. Then, of course, the long wave particle searches are uh, targeting specific uh, lifetime regimes, whereas the invisible uh, or mono X searches uh, can be uh, exploited to constrain the longer lifetime regime, where a sizable fraction of particles uh, decay outside the okay. Two minutes. So here we see a summary tool, basically, where we can see on the x-axis the mean proper lifetime for this benchmark scenario of the X and two long particles decaying fermions. And we can see that on the left side, we have the prompt regime. So basically prompt analysis, resonance searches that can constrain a citable lifetime regime. Then we have the long lived particle uh, searches, uh, which are targeting the intermediate uh, lifetime um, range. And on the right side, the invisible searches coming in this case from uh, monojet or from uh, X invisible combination, which are even. Uh, just to uh, focus on something new for the new generation of analysis, which is uh, an effort uh, on the tracking algorithm. Because uh, as I was saying before, the large reduced tracking is a key ingredient for these searches. And uh, this is uh, running on leftover it uh, with the last tracking cuts. Uh, uh, which are not uh, used in the standard track algorithm. With the new uh, improvement, the new implementation is optimized to reduce the fakes, which are coming from, from combinatorics, by a factor of 20. So now, from now, these algorithms can be run together with the standard tracking, standard tracking and the standard reconstruction chain, which is going to benefit hugely the displaced algorithm and uh, dramatically reducing the, the uh, as you can see in the right side, the plot and plot. Okay. The time is over. Um, then, yes, for the, just a, a quick uh, mention on the ITK, which is an upgrade of the iLumi. Uh, of course, so we uh, expect to have a huge improvement coming from the uh, improved geometry, the larger silicon volume, and the lower material budget, which is going to uh, increase the performance in terms of uh, uh, purity, high resolution, and uh, extending also the RDI where we can start with the purposes. And just to conclude, uh, I was just wanted to mention that the Atlas is not focused only on long lived particles, dedicated long lived particle searches. So we're going to try to have a comprehensive program, which is based on a reinterpretation of the searches that we have, uh, new development of the algorithm, largely tracking the purposes, new technologies, new triggers. And let me mention that. The, Many long lived particle searches are statistically limited, so we will really profit of the new luminosity since the background zero searches are proportional to the integrated luminosity, and we can exploit those new technologies. So, yes, that's it from my side. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's very interesting. Um, so, any questions for Giuliano? If not, I have a question. So, uh, I, I, as I was preparing my talk uh, for, the, for the plenary, on slide five, I was really impressed by the separation that you get using this reduced mass. Uh, would you mind explaining me once again how exactly you construct this variable, especially the de yes. delta R max? Uh, yes, please. Yes. So basically, you you define a displaced vertex, okay, based on the okay. a number of tracks, okay. Then uh, mm -hmm. you. Uh, you use the uh, di radial distance between all the tracks that are uh, used for defining this that display vertex and the displaced vertex direction. Okay. Uh, okay. This is a, yeah. yes. So yes, this is a discriminating variable because you you expect to have a larger. I mean, uh, you expect to reduce with this variable the 
second there is uh, uh, the, the displaced vertex is coming from the interaction of the particles with the director layer, okay? Mm. Because this uh, can have a random distribution, okay? Whereas you expect to have some more uh, boosted uh, or more uh, uh, topological um, direction coming from the signals that we are looking for. Yes, okay. yes. Yes, I understand. So then you, if I understood, you, you calculate the, this delta R n number of times, and then you take the maximum value. That's what exactly. max yeah. stands for. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And M, and for M instead, you reintroduce the, everything, or is it with only the one? That M you is, the, is, is the mass coming from, is the mass of the uh, displaced vertex. It goes up with all the tracks. So you have all the moment of the tracks and to have with the, all the, the displaced okay, vertex. Yes. Okay, this is clever. So, um, yeah, because you see in LACB, for example, we have this uh, material map essentially of the detector, and we veto the vertices uh, in the in the in the material. Why have, have, have you used this approach in the past, or we do it why? as well? We do it as we do it as well. We have a material map, and we, uh, we apply the material map veto for uh, because uh, uh, maybe this is visible. So in the in the plot that was showing on the large radius tracking algorithm. As you can see here, you have some peaks mm -hmm. in, the, in the violet curve, which is uh, peaking on the detector layer. So in the, and the, so this material map veto is particularly important to be applied at least for the previous generation of, uh, um, of analysis, because you have most of the, the tracks or at least many, coming from this uh, material um, interaction uh, process. Okay, Whereas so now one last question. Yes. Yeah, one well, last question is, so if you use the reduced mass, you don't need the material veto? No, no, we do. I mean, in the, yeah. okay. at least uh, in, the, in the previous, uh, in, the, in the current generation of analysis, yes, we need for sure. For the next one, we okay. did improve the large reduced tracking algorithm. This, is, uh, this needs to be yeah, verified. Okay, yes, 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 this will change the game. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, this concludes the session. Uh, we might go back to the first talk if uh, the speaker has solved the audio problem. Uh, I, I remind everybody that uh, uh, the harshness on my side was dictated by the conference organizers that required me to be a bit harsh on time. This is because the next BSM session will start in 20 minutes after uh, the next hour, depending where you're leaving. So if you want to take a break, uh, there isn't very much time to do so. Uh, and that's why we, we, we tried, to, we were a bit harsh. Anyway, uh, Xu Dong, uh, are you there? I see you are uh, connected. Hello, can you yes, hear me? We can Yes. So you still have around five minutes, I think, of your talk plus five uh, of question. Uh, so can you share the slides? Okay. Or you want me to do it, maybe to keep your connection more stable? Uh, I, I, I can do it. Okay. Uh, okay. I, I remind you, you only have five minutes left for this talk. Oh, uh, okay. Then I would be to be quick. Uh, so, uh, yeah, please go uh, okay. ahead. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, this one is the uh, first search for the external like a particle LQ in the boson final state. And uh, the and this one includes the non-rent ALP mediate ZZ and or the his bosons, the productions. And uh, here the Z decays to a pair of neutrino and uh, Z or Hex decays uh, hydronically. And uh, we have merged and low topologies. Uh, for merged, we require one single AKA jet. Uh, for result, we require a pair of AK4 jet. And uh, uh, the dom no, dominant backgrounds are the Z plus Js. Um, and the admission is received from corrections from the data to correct the nomination and the uh, shapes. Um, 
as uh, as two brochure, which is the environment of the, the boson, uh, no, an axis is observed. Uh, this slide gives the upper limit on the um, you know, fixed scale FA, um, and the y-axis is ALP coupling to the groom, the linear and the uh, chiral uh, EFT. Uh, uh, the next one is the uh, uh, learner sticking to Z and V, uh, Z to uh, neutrinos and V to K hydronically. Um, so, uh, here, here we have different uh, scenarios. One is for GGF and the other is for VBF. Uh, for both uh, scenarios, as uh, we have to reconstruct the, the invisible Z and the hydronic uh, Z or W. So here we use the tau to one to recon to take the Z or W jet. Uh, for the VBF uh, the region, we require two AK jet. And in the analysis, the observable is the uh, transfer mass of the W and C, uh, C term. Uh, and we use data driven method to estimate the backgrounds. And this plot, to plot shows the MT distributions. And this slide gives uh, the upper limit on, the, uh, on different uh, renderings. And uh, here, I here gives the uh, include the mass. Uh, the last uh, search is the trouble learner search, and uh, it's the uh, first actually it's the uh, uh, first search, the uh, first first trouble search at the CLHC, and um, we have de we de designed two different uh, analysis, which the first one is with four lepton and uh, the other one is for hydronic final state. Um, and we use DP8 to take the different jets. For double jets, we use different deep double score. For reader jets, uh, you can see so fat jet is WW fat jet, and uh, we use a combination of W and Higgs tagger. Uh, to, text, uh, to calibrate the taggers, we use uh, this and proxies from the standard model and define four different regions. Uh, and we uh, yeah. correct One the minute uh, go now. Okay. Uh, yeah. And uh, look at the red point, which is uh, data over Moncolo before correction and after correction, which is the uh, blue point. You can see the simulation matches the data well. Uh, a challenge, uh, the challenging in the uh, analysis is to uh, calibrate the radiant tagger because they have different, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a complicated structure. We can have four quarks inside or three quarks or, or non oscillated lepton inside. So uh, we use what we did is to uh, require an extra quark glue inside the fully merged top to mimic the R4Q. And uh, then we can use the T3 and T4 to correct the R3Q and R4Q. And for R4Q, we use uh, stand model W to mimic it. Uh, for the dominant background, we use data driven method to estimate. Uh, this two plus shows the trouble learner math for both analysis and right plot shows the combined limit in the 2D WKK mass and the reader mass plane. And uh, the, the time is over. I, I, okay, okay. Sorry, the time is yeah. over. I see you're only on yeah. slide uh, 18, uh, but you have 32 slides, seems to me. Is that right? Or you have some backup? I, I, in, uh, you have some backup. Okay. So yeah. you're almost done. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yes. It, it's done. Yeah. Please finish. Uh, Shudon? Uh, yeah, yes, I have finished. 
and oh, you uh, finished. summary. Okay. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, I thank everybody. Sorry for the slight delay in ending the session. Um, I don't think we have time for question unless somebody has some pressing issue. Shudong, Tanya left a question for you in the Mattermost channel. So if you would like to, um, to join the channel and, and answer a question, uh, that would be good. Um, yeah, okay. Thank you. Okay, so then that's it. Thank you very much. Uh, I will. Uh... Uh, thank you, Ariel. Thank you.